I've been really on my own when I think about it Yeah, my house is not a home when I think about it I've been feeling so alone when I think about it Yeah, nobody really got me when I think about it I'm really on my own when I think about it Alright, man, this one for all y'all cave, you know, people <laughs> All y'all people that love exploring caves and and you know all these mountains and stuff like that man this is 10 scary cave-in videos that will put you seriously on the edge let's get it caving splunking and potholing are all names used for the recreational activity of exploring extreme cave systems this adventurous pastime is not only physically challenging and sometimes dangerous for the participant but it can also be excruciating to watch if you are claustrophobic just the thought of being stuck 200 feet down in a cave, trapped in a tight space. 200 feet down? Bro, y'all be tripping, bro. I mean, hey, live your life, you know, to each their own. I don't judge, you feel me? But for me, personally, you know, I get claustrophobic when I'm around too many people, you feel me? I get claustrophobic in the elevator. I'm not going 200, down, 200 feet down a cave in this tight-ass hole trying to, you know, wiggle myself... I'm good. Like, I'm good, bro. Space with no fresh air mm -mm. can be triggering, with many left wondering what drives people to engage in this potential life-threatening hobby. In this video, we look at Splunkers, who have filmed themselves in the tightest of spots, but it comes with a couple of warnings. Firstly, do not participate in extreme caving unless you have the proper equipment and are accompanied by experienced guides. Secondly, if you suffer from claustrophobia, it is probably better that you do not watch this video. If you're ready to take on the challenge, then hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Now, before we begin this video, we'd just like to say a very special happy birthday to David. Thank you so much for watching the videos, and we hope you have a great weekend. Shout out David. Darren Keelai. Ogofi Darankilai is one of several cave systems in the Langatuk Escarpment near Crickenhowell in South Wales. The cave was discovered in 1957 and is one of the longest cave systems in the country, and parts of it are not for the faint-hearted. With its insanely tight crawl, oh, and daunting no, moves, such child? As the, device, the Armageddon, and the Death. First of all, why does that look like a mouth or something? Like he going down somebody's mouth? I don't like that. It looks all slimy. Ugh. Second of all, always wondered who was the first person to find these caves? Like, who was the first person walking past and was like, you know what? I want to go explore that. I want to go in that. I want to see how far down it goes. Like, no, bro. No. I remember one time I was like, probably like 12, 11. I had this friend named Buddy, man. Shout out to Buddy. I hope he's doing good, man. If you see this, shout out to you. I miss you. Reach out to me. He was like one of my best friends at the time, man. But he was a crazy son of a gun, man. So there was like this, um, you know, like the overpass, like the freeway overpass. And then you have like the, the unders, you know. Uh, I don't know what they call them, like, but it's like a tunnel or whatever. But he was like, yo, there's this big ass tunnel. And I wonder where it goes. Like, we should go in there and see how far it goes. And my dumb ass was like, yeah, let's do it. We didn't have no flashlights. We didn't have no gear. No, no, sh bruh. We walking in here. We probably got 50 feet in, like, to where the light started leaving. I I heard something move, bro. I don't, to this day, I don't know what it was. It sounded like somebody was running up on me. I heard something move, and I was out, bro. <laughs> I was gone. I ran back to that light so fast. I, bruh, and, and ever since then, I don't walk past that. No, mm -mm, I'm good, bro. <laughs> like, I don't walk past it. I won't go on that freeway. Nothing, bro. I got to I gotta detour all the way around. I went around. You know, like, nah, I'm good. I'm solid. <laughs> Squeeze. It's only extreme adrenaline junkies who would dare to attempt it. Look at that, that's crazy, Keith Edmonds nah, and fam. his caving colleagues first ventured into the cave in April 2010. Take a look. Hell no. Since that first visit, they have returned several times, and here is one of the group attempting to squeeze through the vice. Oh, look at that! It's squeezing you! 
not something we'd be signing up for, would you? Stuck. This next footage shows the terrifying moment a potholer becomes stuck in Lost John's Cave on Leckfall in Lancashire, England. It shows Bob Johnson struggling to free himself as freezing water engulfs him. Oh no! Take a look. Oh no! <laughs> Look, bro, I know you gotta stay calm in those situations because you don't want to panic, but me? Oh, oh, you way too calm for me, sir. I'm tripping out. I'm going crazy, bro. Like, I'm going completely bonkers. Like, I'm not having it. There's nothing you can do. That's the crazy part. There is nothing you can do. Look, all this water filling up. Like, there's nothing you can Thankfully, do. Thankfully, other cavers managed to help him. And although bruised and shaken, Bob was unhurt. He later said, I won't be doing that again. That I was believe like a cork it. In a bottle. Dan Sedron. Dan Sedron's YouTube channel has been active for some years. He mainly reviews tech equipment and films himself and his friends during various adventures. However, every now and then, he does a bit of extreme caving. And in this video, which contains a claustrophobia warning, he takes a solo trip to Warsaw Caves in Ontario, Canada. A group of caves that contain long tight passages and areas that are accessible to adventurous spelunkers. Take a look. Actually, if there was a day to do something in the rain, this is it. That's bone. That's a fossil. <laughs> that looked incredibly tight, and to do that alone is probably not recommended. Rescue gone wrong. This next clip is horrific and has a very sad backstory. In January 2002, Dave Shaw, a highly ranked technical deep diver specialist, decided to retrieve the body of a fellow diver, Dion Dreyer, who had lost his life in Boas Mansgat, South Africa, 10 years oh, earlier. Wow. Dave was determined to bring Dion's bones back to his family for burial, but it wasn't going to be easy in one of the world's deepest freshwater diving holes, 271 meters down. The recovery operation was recorded by the diving team with an underwater camera. The dive starts well, and Dave found Dion's body without problem and hooked a line to it so he could bring it to the surface. But he ran into difficulty when the body unexpectedly began to move away as the skeleton within Dion's wetsuit had turned into a soap-like substance oh, called wow. adipocere, which wow. floats. Dave desperately tried to retrieve it, but eventually gave up and started his ascent. But as he swam up, his light got snagged on the line he'd attached to Dion's body. Dave desperately tried to free himself, but the lines had become entangled, and the physical effort of trying to free himself caused Dave to eventually pass out. Sadly, he died under the water. Oh the my! He tried to. That's crazy, G. Think about that. You're trying to be a good person and just, you know, help this family out, and then that happens? Wow. I get it, no man left behind, but I'm sorry. You being left behind on that one, big dog. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not I'm not going in there. I seen what happened to you. you I, I'm gonna suffer the same fate, which he sadly did, man. That's so man, that's hard. That's heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. To save. This video of the recorded footage is narrated by his diving friend, Don Shirley, who was his support diver that day, and who also nearly lost his life trying to save his friend. Three days later, both of the bodies were pulled to the surface as the dive team retrieved their equipment. Damn. Dave's death has been profiled in a number of documentary films, including the 2020 documentary called Dave Not Coming Back. That's, that's, man. Tight squeeze at Deep Cave. Trying to squeeze through the smallest entrance into Deep Cave in Edwards County, Texas, without any specialist equipment is not the best idea. But this group of friends did just that, some attempting to enter the tiny hole head first. This video went viral over 10 years ago. Take a look. 
Michelle bro, what? What, <laughs> what in yeah. God's green earth? Uh, Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Imagine struggling to get in that hole, then being stuck in there, panicked, and not able to get out. Foolish or brave, you decide. Robbie Phillips. Robbie Phillips is a Scottish pro rock climber who documents his extreme climbing adventure on his self named YouTube channel. After watching some of his videos, it's safe to say he is a brave man. However, when faced with the claustrophobic tight spaces of caving, even the bravest can be caught off guard. Take a look at Robbie's first venture into the Knott's Cave 2 caving system in the Yorkshire Dales, England. Wow. Robbie described the crawl as the most claustrophobic experience of his life, although it hasn't completely put him off trying it again. Y'all got balls of steel! Wookie Hole Wookie Hole Caves are a series of limestone caverns on the southern edge of the Mendip Hills near Wales in Somerset, England. They have been used by humans for around 45,000 years and today are a popular tourist attraction, and also a place used to mature cheddar cheese. As a tourist attraction, the cave is notable for the Witch of Wookie Hole, a roughly human-shaped stalagmite that legend says is a witch turned to stone by a monk from Glastonbury. It is- Come again? Did I just hear that correctly? That people are saying that's a witch? Okay? And y'all want to go in this cave with this witch there? <laughs> oh, y'all tripping! Y'all is tripping, man! It's also the place where the first cave dives in Britain took place in the 1930s, undertaken by Jack Shepard and Graham Balcombe. Since then, divers have explored the extensive network of underwater chambers, although the full extent of the cave system is still unknown. In 1981, a trainee diver lost his life during a dive in the caves, after he lost his mouthpiece in one of the chambers. Take a look at this incredible footage of what it's like to dive in the enclosed cave system of Wookie Hall, courtesy of Chris Jewell. Now we scuba dive, but I don't think you'll catch us down there anytime soon. Tight squeeze. This video was filmed in a cave in southern Germany, and it certainly isn't for those who get claustrophobic watching people squeeze through tight spaces. But if you've made it this far into the video, then you're either not claustrophobic or just crazy. Some of the rocks are so tight, you can't even turn your head or fully breathe in to get through them. And because there is also water at the entrance, if you don't wear a proper wetsuit, being cold and wet deep in the cave system could result in death, as a rescue mission is unlikely to be successful if you get stuck. Prepare yourself and take a look. Oh no! No! Bro, look at this! Make my shoulder hurt! I got bad bones, man. I ain't doing none of that. That's crazy. Y'all some flexible people. That's what Jacob that is. Jacob Calvin Hikes. We couldn't make this list without featuring Jacob Calvin Hikes, a YouTube channel dedicated to some of the most extreme caving you'll ever see. Calvin and his teenage nephew Jacob take on some of the tightest squeezes imaginable around Oregon and Washington. The channel never reveals their exact locations in the tightly protected cave system in the regions mainly to protect inexperienced hikers and cavers from trying to find them. The channel's aim is not to encourage viewers to participate in a potentially dangerous activity, but rather to inspire them to follow their dreams. The videos come with a warning about not attempting some of the crawls they do unless an experienced guide is present. 
In some of the videos, you can see the pair struggling to fit through the narrowest gaps, sometimes removing clothes to get through. That's crazy. Here is just a short compilation of some of those terrifying videos we've seen on their channel. Oh, this is weird. This is a weird spot. Ah. 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 drop into this hole. Ah. There we go. It's full of spiders, but Oh no! No! Nutty Putty. You've probably already heard about the tragic demise of John Jones, and we have covered it before on this channel many years ago. But in case you haven't, we'll end this video with a devastating reminder of what could go wrong when you go caving. At age 26, John Edward Jones was in the prime of his life. He was married, had a one-year-old daughter, and was attending medical school in Virginia. In November 2009, John and his brother Josh decided to explore Nutty Putty Cave a notoriously tricky hydrothermal cave formation, located just west of Utah Lake. The brothers had been keen cavers as children, and wanted to revisit their childhood adventures. They weren't alone, nine other friends and acquaintances had joined them. The group set off on the evening of November 24th. About an hour into the expedition, John and a couple of others decided to find the Nutty Putty Cave Formation, known as the Birth Canal a very tight passage that experienced cavers needed to carefully crawl through. It had been years since John had been in a cave, and at six feet tall and 200 pounds, he wasn't a little kid who used to easily crawl yeah, into that's caves a with his father. Big adult. Despite this, John pushed on, entering the narrow opening head first, and carefully shuffling along using his hips, stomach and fingers. However, it soon became apparent that he was stuck. He had squeezed in so tightly, he had no room to turn around, and no room to back out. He tried to push on, but he just made things worse. He was stuck in a space that was barely 10 inches across, and 18 inches high. Josh was the first to find John, and tried to pull his brother out by grabbing his legs. However, this made things worse, and John slid down into the passage even further. His arms were now pinned beneath his chest, and he couldn't move at all. All the brothers who had devote Mormons could do at this point was pray. Josh called for help, but because John was trapped 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the surface, getting rescuers, equipment and supplies down that far took over an hour. The first rescuer to reach John was a woman named Susie Motola, who arrived just after midnight on November 25th. By this time, John had been stuck for three and a half hours. God. Duh. All Susie could see was a pair of navy and black running shoes. Time was running out for John. The downward angle at which he was trapped was putting huge stress on his body, and his blood was struggling to pump around. He began having difficulty breathing. At one point, rescuers brought a two-way cable radio into the cave and managed to lower it to John so he could speak to his wife. Wow. They were both understandably upset, but able to comfort each other. Over the next 24 hours, more than 100 rescue workers tried to free John, but after everything failed to budge him, they decided to use a system of pulleys and ropes. They tied John to a rope connected to a series of pulleys. When everything was in place, they pulled as hard as they could, working in an eight-man tandem. John was at times in great pain, but slowly but surely he started to move, until he was finally high enough to make eye contact with one of his rescuers. They even managed a short conversation. John was almost out. Then suddenly, without warning, one of the pulleys failed after coming loose from its anchor point in the cave wall. The entire team fell backward as the rope suddenly went loose. Once the dust had settled, the rescuers realized John had slid right down the crevice again, this time seemingly even deeper than before. There was now no hope of rescue and John's heart could take no more after hours of strain due to his downward position. Sadly, John was pronounced dead of cardiac arrest shortly before midnight on the evening of November 25th, 2009. Rescuers had heroically spent 27 hours trying to save him. His family thanked them for their help, despite the tragic news. After John's death, officials sealed off Nutty Putty K for good. They never recovered his body, which remains inside to this day. 
John's family had a plaque put on the entrance of the cave in his memory, and Nutty Putty Cave now serves as a natural memorial and gravesite to John Edward Jones. In 2016, filmmaker Isaac Halasima produced and directed a full-length feature film about the life and failed rescue of John Jones, called The Last Descent. It gives an accurate and terrifying insight into the ordeal John suffered, and is well worth a watch. So that's it for this video. If you're claustrophobic... Bruh, that's a cold way to go, buddy. Man, rest in peace to those who lost their life, you know, just trying to do what they love, man, and that's crazy, man. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.